Hello, welcome to another edition of Capper Comparison Picks. I'm Ranch, and today I will be giving you some more Capper Comparison Picks for uh, some more select fights for UFC Vegas 34. It's because, you know, with the week off, I, these fights are way out of order, but I did my do I did my research and my work. I started it last week when they first put out the order. Now the order is all different, and that's why I've, you know, we have a couple prelim fights and one main card feature fight, which uh, I think some of the prelims are better than that. But anyway, regardless, let's get through this. Be sure to check out the um, videos I did previously for the other fights following this the, after this there's only uh the main event and um one more fight except for now i guess um trevin jones found no, another opponent but i'm not going to cover that there's not enough not enough handicappers to to uh put their picks in so aside from that i've covered every fight on the card up to this point Aside from the main event, Gasoline versus Cannoneer, and another main e main card fight, the Cannibal Alexander Pantoja against the uh, Raw Dog Brandon Royval. Those will be on tomorrow's show. But so let's get on with this. We're gonna start out with the uh, now. These are gonna. I'm gonna do these in order as they're listed on Tapology. So we're gonna start out. <clears throat> with the light heavyweight fight between William the Nightmare Knight and Fabio Serrant the Water Buffalo. All right, William Knight, nine and two. He is the favorite here at minus 175. Fabio Serrant the Water Buffalo comes in at plus 150 with a record of seven and two. Okay, let's first talk about the favorite in William Knight. William Knight, trains out of last I knew he trains out of Thornton martial arts with who else who else trains out of that school Parker Porter just coincidentally um, he's got a three inch height advantage yet he's got a three inch disadvantage to the water buffalo Fabio Chiron so that's that's kind of odd but uh, yeah he is fighting out of Hartford Connecticut he's coming off a loss to one of my favorite Korean fighters Da Woon Jung it's a unanimous decision loss. Um, the Nightmare is a, like, you can see he's very muscular, but he, he doesn't, he, you can't judge his gas tank by, you know, most muscular guys gas out. He has gone to decision a few times. And I guess, uh, aside from being a fighter, he is a physical trainer. Okay. Um, his opponent, Fabio, Charant, the Water Buffalo, is coming off a loss to Alonzo Menefield. Coincidentally, that fight he was Alonzo Menefield was supposed to be fighting William Knight, but something happened. He couldn't he couldn't fight, and Fabio Charant came in as a very short notice replacement for William Knight and got uh, Von Flucho first round against Alonzo Menefield. And that, so that was his short notice UFC debut. You can't, I mean, you can't really take too much from that. Um, he fights out of he he fights out of Northeast too, out of Massachusetts, out of Lausanne MMA, and uh, also he has another school listed called Triforce MMA. That's in Rhode Island, and that was the regional scene that he came out of for Fabio Charant. Now, William Knight is 33 years old, Fabio Chiron, 26. So those guys that really put age as one of the factors, there you go. Okay, so let's see who the cappers are taking in this fight. Starting with the favorite in William Knight, we've got James Lynch. The You guys probably know him more for his interviews and his pro picks videos he claims he is not a handicapper but he does a pick show every week where he makes predictions so i don't know but he says there's plenty out there that are much better than him he doesn't have time to watch tape he's too busy doing interviews um 
Also taking William Knight, we've got Sroder, MMA Bet. Uh, he's saying William Knight should get the TKO. However, he is not betting this fight, but that is his pick, his prediction. We've got Greedo. Greedo plays. Greedo does a lot of uh, video game sports seasons. I know he likes the Padres and he likes the Patriots. I know that's, but I, I mean, I only watch his UFC picks, which are fantastic. He does great breakdowns, great visuals too, because he actually shows the fighters, William Knight and Shrunk, in the background as he's talking about them. So we got uh, Greedo saying Knight should get a TKO. He's saying second round. Good on Greedo. Then we've got a new guy. This is the, uh, he is out of New Zealand. He's new to me, I've never used him before. It's Artem MMA Analysis. I've heard his name mentioned on the Fight Night Pick Brothers show. And I, I noticed, even though he uh, claims he's new to MMA handicapping his channel, his channel's been around since for quite a while and he's got over a thousand subscribers, so he can't be that new. He's new to me though. Artem MMA Analysis, and he's out of New Zealand. Anyway, Artem is saying uh, a KO for William Knight. First or second round, I'm just gonna write KO. And then finally, to finish this off, we have the MMA Fortune Teller, also taking the Nightmare William Knight, making this a Full capper consensus. A full capper consensus is when Can all the handicappers pick one side. One side. Do the dance. Full capper consensus dance. Are you throwing some good luck pearls? <laughs> Every time we, there's a Full capper consensus is when all the handicappers pick one side, we do a little dance, and we throw some good luck pearls for the betters out there. So everybody that was on this show did take William Knight. However, I will mention, I didn't feature him on the show, but I know of other handicappers that are, uh, that are pretty well respected that did take Fabio Chiron. I'm not going to mention them because I'm not putting their links in the description. All these guys, their links will be in the description. But for the sake of this video, Fabio Chiron is the opposite end of a full capper consensus. However, I like the kid. I like Fabio Chiron. Like I said, he came in short notice to replace William Knight. And I think William Knight, I don't think he's all that. Like, I, uh, I'm not taking anything against him, but I think he's a little bit overhyped, overrated because he is a beast. He, he's just rock solid. He's, he's, you know, he looks, he looks very intimidating and dominating. But uh, Fabi Chiron, the water buffalo, might not have the same six-pack abs, but I like the, I like this guy. I like that he's stepping in. He stepped in for. William Knight before, and I think he's going to um, perform better. I like his three inch reach advantage. I don't really have much more to say, except for I'm taking the underdog here at plus money, plus one and a half, plus 150. So um, I don't really have to say how he's going to get it done, but I think he'll get it done by decision. Hopefully it, it'll be more than decision, but I don't. I think William Knight is pretty durable. I mean, he went to your decision with Jaun Dung, or I mean Daun Jung. <laughs> was it? Yeah, Daun Jung. So uh, yeah, I don't think it's, he's gonna knock him out. But I do have Sharon upsetting, and I'm going against the full capper consensus. However, like I mentioned, there are. I'm not, the, I'm not alone on this. There are other guys that, like Sharon, MMA Lock of the Night, Dev the Dude, just to name a couple. But they're not featured on this show. They're gonna be, I'm gonna use them 
and their picks tomorrow for the main event and uh, main event and the Pantoja Roy Bow fight. So moving on. Moving on. Next we have. Oh, this is going to be a pretty decent fight. I'm kind of on the fence too. Still, Brian Boom Kelleher taking on. Domingo, son of fire, Pilarte. Okay, Brian Kelleher is coming off a loss to Ricky Simone by unanimous decision. He fights out of Long Island MMA. I am biased to Brian Kelleher. I'm a fan of his. However, he does have double-digit losses. 22 and 12. A lot of experience there, but also double-digit losses. He's the favorite here, minus 175. He's going against Domingo Pilarte. Domingo Pilarte is eight and two. He's the underdog at plus 150. However, Domingo Pilarte, he's got a four inch height. And listen to this, 10 inch reach advantage for Domingo Pilarte. But uh, recency bias says go against him because he's coming off a, what should have been a loss to Journey Newsom, but the loss was overturned and turned to a, no contest due to Jeremy Newsom. Journey Newsom. Uh, testing positive for marijuana. But um, Journey Newsom did knock him out the first round. But it was overturned to a no contest. So it goes in gray rather than, you know, green or red. It's NC, no contest. Prior to that, he has a loss, a split decision loss to Felipe Colares. So, I mean, he's, Domingo Pilarte is not looking good as of late, but I know he does have some uh, chops to him because he comes out of the four, four ounce fight club. That's in Houston, Texas. And uh, yeah, and he does have that massive 10 inch reach advantage over Brian Keller. So let's see what the uh, cappers have to say about this fight here. Starting with Brian Kelleher, we've got, um, I mean, Fortune Teller taking Brian, boom, Keller. And he was, he doesn't care for Brian Kelleher because Brian Kelleher stood him up on an interview. I guess, uh, check the links in the description. He tells a little story. He, he had, he was going to have uh, Brian Kelleher set up. The, Kelleher was like, yeah, dude, I'll do an interview with you. No problem, man. I'll do it. I'll do it. And then he just ghosted him. Didn't respond to his, to his messages and just pretty much ghosted him. But despite that, MMA uh, fortune teller is still taking Kelleher to beat Pilarte here. So um, the bias didn't take effect for that. And he's biased against Kelleher, but he still took him. He's smart. Uh, the new guy, Artem, Artem MMA Analysis, out of New Zealand, also taking Kelleher. Uh, Greedo, saying Kelleher by decision. Schroeder is saying by, or within, inside the distance, so I'm gonna say within distance for Kelleher. And within distance would be, that's that's how it's expected. The bookies have the under two and a half rounds at minus 170. You think it's gonna go the distance? Plus 140 for yes. So Greedo, if it goes the decision, he's making out. Plus money. Um, and then um, finally, James Lynch to cap it all off for yet another full capper. Consensus! <laughs> James Lynch. Yeah, another one. Two in one show. Can you believe it? James Lynch is saying by decision for Brian Boone Kelleher. Everyone's going against Pilarte. Well, you don't count. You're not a handicapper. Why did you choose that one? I make my picks after. Like I did here, I picked the other guy. 
but I'm going against the consensus, that's all. But in this situation, I'm with the consensus. I like Brian Kelleher. I'm a fan of Boom, Brian Kelleher. I, I gained a lot of respect for him in his fight against Cody Stammen. Cody Stammen's uh, brother, younger brother, passed away from cancer, like, short, just previously of that fight, and after the fight, which he lost by decision, he went and gave Cody a hug, and he said, I got, he's like, I wouldn't be able to fight, you know, and I give all mad props to this guy, and I, I really like, I like that aspect of, of Brian Kelleher, and I think he's, I'm going with the Cabbers. And he's the favorite. Flarte, you know, he got that knockout. He got knocked out by Journey Newsome. And Journey Newsome was tested positive marijuana. And then before that, he lost to, uh, who did I say? How do you Felipe, spell potato? Felipe Colares. How do you spell potato? P-O-T-O-T-O-E. Oh, that's A. P O T A T O E, right? Does the potato have an E at the end? Oh, potato. Potato. So I'm also taking Brian Kelleher. I don't like his double digit losses, and I don't like his disadvantage of uh, reach disadvantage, but the guy is so aggressive. He'll get on the inside, and, you know, he, he should. He'll. He should get the victory here over uh, Domingo Pilarte. Ha! Mr. Potato! Yep, Mr. Potato. Okay, moving on. Finally, we've got the heavyweight fight between Chase the Vanilla Gorilla Sherman. There's like four built Vanilla Gorillas in the UFC. Four, four different, I think there's like four different people using that nickname, Vanilla Gorilla. It's got to be the, one of the most, most popular nicknames. But anyway, this Villa, Vanilla Gorilla, Chase Sherman, comes in with a record of 15 and 7. He is the favorite at minus 190. And he's taking on Parker Porter. Parker Porter is uh, 11 and 6. Plus 165. A little bit of value there for a heavyweight fight. A lot, when, a lot of people, as soon as it comes to heavyweight, because a heavyweight can knock the other guy out with just one right, rightfully placed heavyweight punch. And both these guys are will strike. They're both strikers. So a lot of people do the uh, dog or pass when it comes to heavyweight fights. Same with like a lot of people do a dog or pass when it comes to female fights too. But anyway, regardless of that, uh, Chase Sherman's coming off a loss to uh, Andre Arlovsky by unanimous decision. I guess um, he had a torn ACL during that fight. I wrote that in my notes. I don't know where I heard that. He used to train out of uh, Dilbertsville 8 American Top Team in Dilbertsville, Mississippi. However, uh, through the interview with James Lynch, interviewed him. He is now fighting out of Samford MMA. And Chase Sherman, so better school. Oh, you Parker Porter, as I said, he fights out of uh, Underdog MMA, which is with William Knight in Hartford, Connecticut. Both these guys actually were interviewed by James Lynch. Um, Chase Sherman has a four inch height, three inch reach advantage. Uh, and he's got the age advantage because Chase Sherman is 31. Parker Porter is 36 for Parker Porter. I mean, <laughs> that was a slip. Parker Porter. <laughs> but uh, I've seen a lot of people purposely call him Porker. And it's because he's, you know, he's, he doesn't, he, had, he has a, he could cut down and make 205 and that's where and he can make light heavyweight if he wanted to he, he has that much extra flag for a better you know anyway parker porter uh is a little bit too heavy for his body size i think so, and so do a bunch of other cappers but nonetheless he is coming off a win against josh parisian unanimous decision so you gotta give him that. 
he's uh, and Chase Sherman's coming off that loss to Andre Orlovsky. Orlovsky was ooh. What's a jump? Well, that looks delicious. Anyway, no, thank you. Um, let's start with the favorite here in Chase Sherman. We've got Sroder taking Chase Sherman by TKO. Once again, no bat. Then we've got um, Greedo. Greedo plays. Also taking Chase Sherman. You see how this starting to look, right? Artem, the new guy, Artem's on main analysis, KO in the first or second. And uh, James Lynch, like I said, James interviewed both these guys, and he was the one that mentioned Chase Sherman is now at Sanford MMA. That's with like uh, Gilbert Burns is out of there, Jack Ray Souza. It's the one. It's in Florida. Uh, Vincente Luque. He's Sanford MMA product. It's a pretty good, pretty good camp. Um, James Lynch, and finally, this is not a full capper consensus because MMA fortune teller is the contrarian pick. MMA. Fortune Teller taking Parker Porter to get the victory here as the underdog play over Sherman for plus money. I would do the same, except I like, I like Kay Sherman's going to be the bigger guy in there. Like I said, he's got a four inch height, three inch reach advantage, and he's more fit. He doesn't have the flab. But I don't know, Parker Porter might come in on weigh-in days and look diesel. I don't know. It's hard to say. I'm going with my first module. Actually, second module because I've do, done some research now. Like I told you in the if you get in the past episodes, there's three mods when I'm choosing my fights. As soon as the, as soon as the card comes out, my first mod is just off of instinct and name knowledge. And without any research, just looking. I looked Sherman Porter. Before looking at anything, I picked Porter. Second mod is after you do some research. I got the height, I got the reach, I got the past, uh, past opponents, all that stuff soaked in. Now I'm leaning Sherman. Third mod is how they look at the weigh-ins and face-offs. So it, the pick could still change. However, I will place this bet and I'm taking, I will place this parlay just like I do at the end of every show. I make a parlay with my choices and that will stay. However, I may uh, flip my pick when I'm live betting or, you know, when I say live bet, I don't, not during the fight, I don't live bet like that. I, live bet to me would be like minutes before they make their entrance into the ring. You can still bet on bet online, still get your bets in there. Gotta be quick though, because as soon as they step into that ring, bets are off. Bang. But, um, yeah, the third mod after weigh-ins and face-offs, that's when I might flip my pick. And uh, hopefully this, yeah, this Friday I will, I'll do a live stream with BC Dave because it's been quite some time since I've done one. He's got a day job now, so he's, he's very busy, but I think he might be able to squeeze in a, a couple hour live stream Friday night post weigh-in, after the weigh-ins and face-offs. So tune in for that, be in the chat, and uh, you know, I'm very interactive with the chat. So yeah, I'm taking uh, Chase Sherman. I think he's gonna get it done by knockout, because like I said, it's gonna be standing up. These guys are big boys. Parker Porter, he's just, I mean, I like the guy. I just think Chase Sherman switch a better camp. He's got the size advantage. Seems to be better physically fit. So I'm going to say TKO for Chase Sherman. I'll say first round. Should I say first round? You know, I'll say second round. Second round. First round, they're going to 
fiddle around, feel each other out, and that might that might happen first round. But for the sakes of tapology, I'm gonna say KO TKO second round. So there you have it. To recap. Time check, thank you. To, to the time check. It is all right. Plenty. Love. What's the time check on the video? Oh, very good. I still got five minutes. So, to recap. I've got the water buffalo, Fabio Charon, upsetting the nightmare, William Knight. Big upset. I think he's gonna get it done by decision. I'm just not, I'm, not, I'm just not overly impressed with William Knight. And then I've got, with the capper major, with the capper consensus, I've got Brian Kelleher beating Domingo Pilarte. Um, did I say how? No, I didn't. I'm gonna say he's gonna get it done by inside the distance. We're gonna say uh, KO TKO TKO. Round three. TKO round three. And finally, I've got Chase Sherman. A little bit more experience. Better, he's got the age advantage, the height reach advantage, experience advantage, the better uh, op opponent resume better training facility in my opinion so i'm gonna take chase sherman to get this done tko second round i'm pretty that's of this of these three this is my most confident pick this is my least confident pick obviously and uh so there you go gather the info place those bets and cash those tickets i appreciate you watching be sure to give me that thumbs up. Go ahead and in the comments, put your parlay picks. Put who you think is going to win any of these fights. You know, go ahead. I always read the comments. I interact with them. Not always, but sometimes interact with them. But I definitely check them all out. So put them in there. Thanks for watching. Good luck with these bets, and I'll see you tomorrow.